Sorry about the crazy lighting. Um, the sun is about ready to set and it's streaming through my window and it's very beautiful, but it's going to make this video look weird. Um, I wanted to talk about Star Wars. I'm one of those people who did not enjoy The Last Jedi and I'm probably going to get more in depth into that um, in another video. But in this video, I wanted to talk about um, a common uh, claim by a lot of the creators of the Star Wars, um, the newer Star Wars franchise, and a lot of the employees at Lucasfilms, and a lot of people in science fiction and fantasy and comic books and geek culture in general, of there not being enough strong female characters in um, the star, just particularly in the Star Wars franchise, and that women need characters that they can relate to. Now, um, to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think the gender of a character is necessarily going to have that much of a determination as to whether or not people relate to the character. It's more of the behavior of the character that people would relate to in whatever situation that they're in. Um, but as far as the Star Wars franchise goes, I'm making this video to uh, come out with a very strange... Uh, confession. I do not relate to characters based on gender or um, attributes like, oh, well, she's got the same hair color as me and she's the same gender as me and she's like me. That's not what makes me relate to them. What makes me relate to them is also their behaviors and also their mind. And the character that I relate to most of all, I know I'm weird, in the Star Wars franchise is R2-D2. Now let me explain why. I grew up in somewhat of a tumultuous environment. I was raised in a religion that was very restrictive and um, kind of abusive. And I was raised in a house that was not peaceful. So there were certain behaviors that basically became my programming. Um, anxiety, fear, self-doubt, um, and things that became a part of who I am as a person today. Um, I am going through therapy at the moment, but uh, I will say that I do have a lot of disassociative moments when I go through a stressful situation or when I'm experiencing something that reminds me of a past situation um, that forces my behavior in a certain way. That kind of reminds me of being like a robot. There are times when I feel like my my mind wants to react to a situation because it's programmed to by my past rather than the way I want to react to that situation. And R2-D2 is like that. He's this little astromech that is designed to do his job, take orders, and that's it. And yet he decides to go against his programming to stand up for something that I guess could be described as an artificial intelligence version of conviction, you know? And basically the result of that becomes somewhat eerily similar to free will. Now, if you know anything about artificial intelligence and how complex the human consciousness is and how we're struggling to recreate that in AI, you'll see how big a deal that is. And that's why I feel that the character of R2-D2 is the most incredible and in-depth character, at least for me, to relate to. I feel like there are times when I'm a robot that it would be safer to just keep your head down like C-3PO says and do what you're programmed to do and don't make waves. I have a hard time standing up for myself against bullies and I have a tendency to do behaviors that draw bullying you know, activity in my direction and... There's a part of me that wants to fight against that and wants to move on and wants to grow. And I don't want my past to define me. I don't want my programming to define me. I, I, I may be this robot that had some sort of software forcibly downloaded into my little brain as a child, but I am a conscious being that has the freedom to choose what I want to be and what I want to do with my life. And I don't feel that my past should be what dictates that. 
And that's why I relate to R2. Because he's not just a little astro mech, okay? R2-D2 is a hero, a real one.